on desktop. Triggering server sleep on desktop. Now check this out. Alexa, open trigger command. Say something like, run calculator on office PC. Run wake up on server. Triggering wake up on server. There you go. Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, my name is Kalen and I'm going to show you uh, how to set up Trigger CMD. It's a really cool uh, app built by Russ Vanderbay and uh, I love it because I've been using it so far for a couple of things but there's a variety of things you can use it for and a lot of people tend to um, want to know more and more how to control the computer uh, by voice or how to control it from the computer. Now, once you actually have the app and you're, you've installed it, integrated it with your computer, you can control all that stuff from these buttons here too. And I believe you can do it remotely because it's all working through the cloud. Um, so, just to give you a heads up, what you want to do first, you want to go to TriggerCMD.com, okay? And then once you go to TriggerCMD.com, it's going to bring you here. And you can log in with these. Um, I want to put a little bit of caution on that because it's going to save you a little bit more time if you actually uh, use an email and a password because later on when you want to do some integrations uh, you have to actually set up a password so these are great for just logging in really easily um, but again it's easier later on if you just use an email and a password here and sign in because some of the integrations that you have later on it can cause some issues so when you get in here you want to first go to instructions right here Okay, and then um, this is if you have a Windows computer, this is if you have a Mac, this is if you have Linux. Uh, so let's say if you have a Raspberry Pi or something that's super lightweight like a Pine 64 or something like that. Those are like miniature computers. They're, I, I don't know what they're called, like single board computer processor or something like that. Um, but basically a uh, little tiny computer um, so usually an advanced user will be using one of these but I'm going to show you how to do all three of them today except for a Mac uh, because I love Linux and it's pretty much the same thing to me um, anyways so let's say you go in here and you download it and you install it so this is going to give you an exe file this is going to give you a deb and then you're going to install it everything goes great and what you're going to do is you're going to get this little guy right here okay and when you get this and you open it and run trigger CMD for the first time there's going to be a window that pops up it's pretty simple it's not hard to um, identify but basically that that little window that pops up it's got a blank uh, field that you have to actually add this token to okay it's gonna ask you for a token this is what you need to put in there and then once you do that you should be good and ready to go at least for the first part okay so once you do that and you go and you click on list, your computer should populate right here. Now this part's kind of important. Right here when you click on edit, you can name your computer to a different name for the voice trigger. Uh, this is important to me because like your naming convention is everything. And so basically if you name it something like, I don't know, desktop Dell computer PC or something like that, or some really long name or some name that's like very common and and can be confused with other names the voice recognition is going to have issues so you want to make it as simple as possible but also a way to differentiate if you have four computers which most people don't but you never know you might have two laptops and you have laptop one and laptop two or you might have like bedroom laptop and living room laptop and I would definitely try to make it as simple as possible with um, one word at the most uh, but you can go for two it's just gonna get tricky later on okay and so once you're done doing that and you've got that in there basically um, with each of the systems it's a little bit different on how you edit the commands because when you click on view triggers that's the commands that you're setting up just like how I showed you in the beginning of the video of how to wake up and make my computer go to sleep you can't edit it in here okay you have to actually go down to the icon or if you're in Linux 
I'm going to open up my Linux computer as well just to make it a little bit easier for you so you can see that. And when you're in here, you go up here, okay? And then basically you go to text command editor. And this is where you add these commands. And what you can do is you can simply just copy one of these and you can paste it, but you have to keep the format and what I mean by that is you see how this last one does not have a comma here on the JSON and the JSON is that's this type of file but this is a text editor we're using to edit it so what you're gonna do is let's say you copy this whole line and then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna hit return right here so we're gonna go to here and then we'll just hit return and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna paste it right there okay and we're gonna try to keep the format the same so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit so it matches but you'll notice that that comma I left the trailing comma I guess we'll call it it's right there but there's not one right here and that's perfect because I'm sure if you leave one on the end there it's gonna screw it up okay so and these are all just fancy little um, commands here that are inside of this string of parameters and values and really ultimately this is what you're going to say to trigger whatever trigger you set up so like I have server restart um, and when I put the computer to sleep it was server sleep okay and the name of my computer was desktop but you notice that's not in here and so you have to also be very careful with how you name these and so this is going to probably be one of the most important if not the second most important things to fill out right here and then um, as far as um, I, I put these in the foreground because I wanted to be able to see them when I was actually setting up the commands on my list which this guy back here in the graphical interface the web interface um, so I left those at foreground and then really what you do is you put the command in here and so Windows there's all different kinds of commands that you can put in here but this right here is this is a command for Linux or Unix and it reboots the computer and this one puts it to sleep and then basically right here this is just the title okay and the name of it and what actually shows up right here okay if you have it set to foreground and so that's basically it and then you go and you save this you can add a bunch of commands in here but it's pretty simple to set up okay and if you're trying to figure out like Windows commands and stuff what you can do is you can actually look up commands um, like in Google like shut down that's a popular command um, or the calculator command um, but I don't know all of them off the top of my head because I use uh, Unix and Linux m more regularly uh, than Windows uh, but I think uh, the app developer had some that were in the actual like forums for Windows to try to help like to run the calculator and some of the other things they came standard on some of the computers once you integrate them or sync them but um, basically you'd put the command in right here okay because this is a Unix command so in Windows we would put shut down just like it was showing in that popular um, command that I just showed you a second ago from over here oh here it is this guy right here this would be that command okay and so um, it looks like there's some other ones in here um, like restart I don't I don't know if that's a different command than shut down but really open the command prompt that's to restart it right there okay and I think I want to say no it is a little bit different you can see here it's different in Windows versus Linux because this is Linux and that's Windows so I hope that's a little bit helpful you can type in CLI when you search on Google because that stands for like command line interpreter um, for your command line and you can like try to look up commands or like how to run certain programs there's a lot of different things you can do with that um, but really that's all you have to do to set up the triggers is you basically go into that text command editor and then you want to save it and then when you're in Windows you do the same thing you go into Windows I've got because right now I'm on VNC this is my other computer so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to close this guy so this doesn't confuse you guys. Okay, so now I'm back on my Windows computer. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do the same thing. Text Command Editor. And then in here, uh, this is where you're going to edit. And then you're going to save it. So similarly, you know, so you can see in here, um, it looks like Calc is the calculator command for Windows. Notepad is the Notepad command for Windows. 
And then um, there's that shutdown. Um, and it looks like maybe that's a 10 second timer. I don't know what that is exactly. Um, I'm just guessing. So anyways, that's how you set up the triggers. And you're going to save it. Now, one thing that is different, though, is the Raspberry Pi. So this is my Raspberry Pi. I'm using my VNC server, and so I'm remotely logged into it right now. This one's a little bit different because I found that I had to actually go into this file here. It was uh, the commands, not the backup one, the commands.json file. And um, I don't know why it was showing that I had to edit it in root. Maybe it was just some documentation I found that was outdated. I don't know. But I had to go into this directory because you're installing a non-graphical interface. And so there's no user interface like these other ones that's all fancy to where I can go and click on it in the corner or anything. It's not up here. So I had to actually pull open the text file from um, one of the directories. And it's similar, same thing, you know, it's like I have to go in here and you can see in here that this is how I have my computer um, to where it, it wakes up that one desktop when it goes to sleep. The Raspberry Pi is actually sending it a ping in a magic packet to wake it up. And I had to install a package called wake on LAN and then from the command line you basically do wake on LAN space and then you have your MAC address right here and it wakes it up and then ironically on my desktop on that desktop that I had wake up and go to sleep that desktop is um, basically set with a suspend command and that suspend command is what makes it go to sleep and then while it's asleep it can't wake itself up so I have this little Raspberry Pi that wakes it up and it's really cool because I can control all of them, all of the computers, whatever I set up the triggers for remotely through the cloud service that um, Russ has set up with Trigger CMD. So that's that's the Raspberry Pi, that's the, um, the Linux computer and my Windows computer kind of all in a nutshell. And the Raspberry Pi is really easy to set up. It's just a dev file. Same thing with Linux. You open it and you just install it from the software center, okay? And so um, that's that in a nutshell for all of that portion of just setting up the triggers. And then once you set up those triggers, like I said, this is the biggest part right here is these naming conventions because you want to make sure that your names are easily um, like you can. They're not going to be confused with something else because sometimes these um, voice controlled like devices like Alexa or Google Home, they have issues understanding you, especially if you're further away. Now, she heard me. So, um, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, and here, this is important because like I said, you want to make sure to set up these names um, as best you can because it's going to be really hard to make them, uh, make the commands work, okay? And then from there, when you want to sync it to Alexa, what you're going to do is um, you basically will go to your um, Alexa portal. It's Alexa cancel. Sorry, she keeps hearing me. And when you get in here, you go to skills. Okay. And then you're going to go to um, right here and you just type in trigger. And it should pull up both of them. There we go. This is the one I'm using because this one's, I think this is the newer one. And then um, what you want to do is if you already logged in to trigger CMD from um, earlier when you're in here setting everything up, just stay logged in. And you'll notice when you hit uh, enable, it's going to just sync it right up because you already have it ready to go and you hit allow. Okay. And so that's it to basically set it up to do a couple commands from either a Raspberry Pi from a Linux desktop or from a Windows desktop. And then um, if you have smart things, I'm going to show that here in a second.